I want you to imagine for a minute. I want you to think of the thing that you want most in your life. That there, or the thing maybe that throughout your life that you wanted more than anything else. Something that comes to your mind that you just, you, you knew wouldn't come to you right away. It wasn't something easy. It wasn't something that you could just get by it, having someone drop it in your lap. But it was something that you, you strived your life for. Something that you worked hard for. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about all that you had to do to get that. All the goals you had to set. The hard work you had to put in. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what those were. Is it something that you still value? Is it something that you still would hold up and say, this is, this is my honor. This is something great. I know there are things in my life that I've, that I've set goal for, goals for, that I, things that I've dreamed about. Things that I've looked forward to, and three, at least three of them come to my mind that have, that have happened within these last three years. One of those things was becoming a pastor. For years, I looked forward to that time. Sometimes I fretted, admittedly. Sometimes I worried. Sometimes I didn't know what would happen. But I looked forward to that opportunity that I would have to come and share the gospel message with God's people. As you know, three years ago, that dream, God blessed me, and I was able to come here. Another one of those is... Buying the first, my first home. Carla and I, as you know, bought our first home and starting a family. Now, for you guys, maybe these are long past dreams, things that you did years and years ago. Maybe you started your family years ago. You, you bought your first house years ago. You, you had your first job years ago. But think about the dreams that went into that. The dreams that you still have, maybe not for you anymore, but the dreams you have for your family, for your, for your sons, your daughters, your grandsons, granddaughters. Think about what you imagine. You want a life better for them, don't you? You want their lives to be greater than yours, to be more wonderful. And you know that it doesn't come easy. No matter what those happen to be, do they? That those things don't just happen. It takes hard work, and it takes discipline. And so, and, and so we can... Stand right alongside that guy who is digging in our parable today, can't we? We can stand in his sandals and, and we can realize exactly that hard work that he was doing. Well, maybe you have never picked up a, a shovel before. I'm, I'm sure most of you have, though. But that's hard work, isn't it? He probably had calloused hands. The sweat that he wiped from his forehead as he stood in that hot Palestinian sun. The sore shoulders. The sore back that he had each day. And also another thing about digging well you know that it's it, it doesn't take a lot of thought really does it as you're just picking up each shovel full after the next so i imagine this man had a lot of time to think don't you that as he stood there as he as he was as he was shoveling along that dirt that he had a lot of time to think about his life think about the the dreams that he had for his kids the dreams that he had in mind for them the plans that he had for them i imagine he was in one of the such daydreams as as he was shoveling down and suddenly hit something hard. Now I imagine his first response was, was a bit of a groan, wouldn't you? As, as you've been shoveling before and you, 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 the first thing you hit when you hear that ting, you imagine it's some rock, don't you? And as he started to shovel around that rock, shovel around those things, he discovered it, it, was, it wasn't that plain, that plain color of rock, but there was a bit of a gleam to it. In fact, as he, as he uncovered it a little more, he, he noticed that these were copper. Not just one copper kettle, but there, there were several copper, copper kettles. He, he kept on digging, kept on shoveling, and he, and he opened up the first one. And I imagine it, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. That as he looked into there, he saw something he wasn't used to seeing. Gold coins, silver coins, bronze coins. He saw, he saw jewels, precious gems. And you heard how excited he was, didn't you? Immediately, he had to cover it back up, and he had to run, and he had to go and buy that field, didn't he? Well, what about if it was one of us? Would you do that? I can't imagine I would. Because, did you notice, he gave up everything to buy that field. He gave up everything to run and buy that field. And not just, he didn't just run off with the treasure. That wouldn't have been right. But he, he gave up everything so he could... So he could get that treasure. Now I imagine if, if one of us were standing there, we'd say, no, you should turn it over to the owner of the field. Well, he probably thought to himself, I know, I, I know that this might not be the owner. This might be someone who buried it in the land because, well, see, they didn't have banks back then, so, he probably, so people would bury things for safekeeping. 
And sometimes as they were going to war, maybe, maybe they wouldn't come back for it. And, and so he knew that this treasure, this was his. But you sell everything for it? Sell everything for it. W- would you do that? Would you risk your family's future by selling everything for one thing? Would you risk the safety and security you have in retirement for one thing, one goal? Is there anything in your life you would do? No. We're prudent people, aren't we? We would stand over his shoulder and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't sign that deed. Don't sell all your things. You need to take care of your family. Seems kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? Seems kind of off the wall even. Why would he do that? Why would he sell everything for this one treasure? Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Suppose there was that one. That one who, who found that great treasure, that, that wonderful treasure. Suppose there was that one who came down from heaven who came off his throne, who gave everything. Suppose there was that one who, as ridiculous as it may seem, gave his entire life for his treasured possession, his church. For us, this is, this is ridiculous. This is unfathomable. We are people who, as, as though, although we are Christian, we are righteous people, we still know that we have our own self-interest and our own selfishness in mind at times, don't we? We have our own, our own desires. We want to, pr- to provide for ourselves, protect for our families. So this sacrificial act of love, it, it's ridiculous. So ridiculous, isn't it? That No one on this earth would do it, would they? Not one would, would give everything for, for, for one. But there is the one. The one who, 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 who came down from all his glory came down from all his power, came down from his eternal, his, his wondrous place in heaven. He gave his life for us. Of what value are we? Treasured possession? I don't know. We oftentimes c- confess that we are poor, miserable sinners, don't we? We confess that we have failed to, to, to live up to God's standard of perfection, don't we? We confess that by thought, word, and deed, we have not kept God's commands. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve God's temporal and eternal punishment, don't we? A treasured possession? Seems ridiculous. But that's God's love for us. His ridiculous love for us. His ridiculous love was that he gave everything for us. Now that farmer in the field, it, it, it barely even captures the idea of, who, of who, what Christ did. It barely even captures the suffering and death he went through for each one of us. But he looked beyond our sinfulness, beyond our brokenness, and he saw us and he said, I want you. You are my treasured possession. I will give anything for you. And he gave his life. How beautiful it is because we don't see that we get so used to seeing the selfishness and we get so caught up in the things of this world don't we even even knowing that beautiful story that of of christ's ridiculous love we get caught up in our day-to-day lives we get caught up in what we have to do what where we want to go the way we want to live we get caught up in the troubles we have and, and and we don't treasure god as he treasures us what he wants he wants us to love uh, love him just like he loves us now that's impossible isn't it because we're all sinners but his love for us is so astounding it's so astounding that there's nothing there's nothing that can separate us from him for i'm convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers 
Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is absolutely nothing because Christ gave everything. Because He gave that free gift for us that we would be His treasured possession now and forever. But He didn't only buy His treasured possession, His people in the church. He bought the whole field. See, that field, that field is full of people who are still, they don't have that treasure in their heart. They don't have that treasure of salvation in their heart, do they? They're, they're empty plots. They're, they're, they're spots that are, that are accurate. And they need... They, they need that treasure, that free gift of Christ. They need to know that it is not just reserved for people who sit in pews on Sunday mornings. That it is not just reserved for, for, for those who have been church families for years and years. But this is for the person laying in the hospital bed. The gospel is for the person sitting on the street curb. The gospel is for the person who's even laying in their bed this morning. The gospel is for all people. Now, Some people choose to reject it. They choose to throw that treasure away. Matthew says, for where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. Actually, he's quoting Jesus when he says that. And they put their treasure, their stock, into things of this earth, don't they? And how often does that happen? How often do people exchange this wonderful treasure that cannot be broken, this treasure that cannot rust, this treasure that will fall away? Bank accounts that are being eaten up. Homes that are going into foreclosure. Cars that will rust and need repair. No, our value is not on this earth. It is in heaven. Because we, we are the treasured possession of God. We are the people of Him who He came for. And He desires that treasure in our hearts too. That we exchange those things of this world for Him. Now this, this, this parable, it, it's not about money. It's not about goods, is it? You know, it's strictly about God's love for us. And that's the thing about parables. Sometimes it's so hard to understand them because here we sit and, and first of all, we're generations removed. But then even beyond that, Jesus wasn't always super clear about it. I can imagine as the disciples were sitting there that day, Jesus asked them, did you ever understand everything I did? Yes, Jesus, yes, we sure did. You know, how many times do we do the same thing? Yes, I understand, but we don't. Because we can't understand everything about God's kingdom, can we? In our kingdom, we're used to being able to, to touch or to taste, to smell, to, to hear, to, to feel. To, we're used to that. We may not want to do that with everything in this kingdom, but, but we can't do that with God's kingdom. And so Jesus, understanding kind of our... Understanding us as people. He teaches us in a way we can understand. He sits down and he gets down on our level. And he gives it to us in story form. Whether by a parable about treasure buried in the ground or a parable about a great pearl, the value we are to him. A parable out about a dragnet or, or weed and tares. But, he te- but because we can't completely understand, he, he wants us to understand at least at least understand that He loves us. Understand that He has come for us. That He has come as our Redeemer. When we look at those parables, it's important not to read too much into them, though, either. And to know. And to just know that there are things we'll never understand this side of eternity about God's kingdom. But those are reserved for us for when we join Him. All of you, I'm sure, have had questions that time, haven't you, in your lives where you've said to yourself, well, I'll ask God that when I, jo- when I get to heaven. And there are certain things He sets aside for us in that way. So that as long as we're on this earth, though, He ensures we know the most important thing. And that is that we are His treasured possession. His redeemed people. A people who are chosen and belonging to Him. Let us pray. Lord, we know that we don't know every aspect of you. We know that we don't know every aspect of your kingdom. But give us the confidence and the understanding to know that you have shown us what we need to know. 
You have shown us your great love through your sacrifice on the cross. You have revealed to us your power. And may that be for us each day, Lord, more than enough. May it be more than enough that we may know that we are your treasured possession. That we may know that you have given everything so that we can be yours. Lord, help us to be the ones who share that treasure with others. Who, who go out beyond our comfort zone to bring that good news to a lost world, an empty field, that they may know your forgiveness, that they may know that they are your children as well. Lord, this we pray through your Son's name, Christ Jesus our Lord, who has redeemed us. Amen.